Hey everyone, it's Nick Jerusalo here with the Jerusalo's Happy Home Team. And as you can see, we're in front of the trusty whiteboard. I got my sleeves rolled up, so it's time to learn. And so today we're talking about home pricing, and more specifically, how do you know when you might need to look at adjusting the price for your home? Now, first of all, there really isn't kind of a one-size-fits-all answer to that because it really depends on the specific property. So say, for instance, the home is in a large subdivision where lots of homes similar to it have sold recently. We know that there's a relatively high demand for something like that. That means the market's gonna tell us pretty quickly whether or not the price and the way the home's presenting itself is in sync to get it sold quickly. If it's something more unique, say you have a lot of acreage or maybe a waterfront home that needs that very specific buyer, we often will look at pricing very differently in those types of scenarios. So the first thing we wanna really pay close attention to is what is the activity in the first one to two weeks that the home comes up for sale. Because when you list the home, basically you have a backlog of buyers that have seen everything that's already on the market, and now they're just sitting and waiting for something new to come up for sale. So in that first couple weeks is really the most critical time from a marketing exposure standpoint and also to be reactionary to the market. Because if, let's say in that first couple weeks we have lots of showings, but no offers. That tells us that buyers think the price is realistic enough that they're coming out to look at it. They're not just kind of ruling it out that it's some pie in the sky number. And then once they get to the home, either something about the home specifically doesn't fit their needs, or maybe they're determining that other homes in the marketplace represent better values. So oftentimes if it's in a rapid turnover type of product, type of home, and in that first couple of weeks, good showings, but no offers, that means the market's typically telling us that we're within about two to 3% of where the price needs to be. And so sometimes just a small adjustment can kind of rekindle that interest, get it right back in front of the eyes of the most ready, willing, and able buyers. If let's say during the first couple weeks, there's just nothing, there's no showings, no offers, we're just getting crickets, then the market is telling us that they're rejecting the property altogether. And that typically requires a more radical adjustment. And sometimes what it means is that we might need to get the home exposed to a new group of buyers that weren't even thinking about the home before. And so the way to do that is to so often, the best approach is to get into a new price tier. And what I mean by price tier is that buyers tend to look and lenders tend to issue pre-approvals in $25,000 increments. So say if you're on the market at 500,000 and there's just nothing, the next group of buyers would be at that 475 and below price point. So sometimes we might need to make a more of a three to 5% change in price or you know getting down to that next $25,000 price tier. Now, these are all generalities because a couple examples of uh, other circumstances where maybe the price is not the issue, like we had a waterfront home that we sold not too long ago where, again, that's always a specific type of property, specific buyer. We had it on the market through the winter time, you know, not the ideal time to be selling waterfront. It's kind of like trying to sell a motorcycle in the middle of December or something as opposed to that spring summer season. And this particular home had some kind of rough houses around it, you know, a home with 12 cars in a yard and kind of an iffy area, but it's waterfront and it was good value. And we were getting two to three showings a week for months on end. And usually we would not let a property go for months without making a price adjustment. But because of the activity and the uniqueness, it was it seemed pretty clear that the, the problem wasn't really the price, it was just making sure we got the right buyer. And in that scenario, the owner owned that home free and clear. And so it wasn't really costing him anything to carry the home, it was vacant. And so rather than just trying to do some aggressive price drops to try to move it, we opted to take it off the market, wait till the following spring cycle, put it back on the market at the exact same price, and we were able to sell the home for full price in under a week. Whereas if we just tried to beat that seller from price, he might've agreed to it, but that might not be the best option for our client. The last thing we wanna do is take money away from our clients. That's always our very, very last resort. Another example is we had a condo in downtown Seattle studio property, um, had no parking, so that was some challenges. But again, we had five to six showings a week because new buyers were entering into that market very quickly at that time. And, and also a lot of homes in that exact building had already sold recently, so a lot of buyers that were maybe waiting on the fence for condos in that building already had their opportunity and already swooped on one of the other properties for sale. So we stayed the course, and sure enough, after two months, we sold at full price, even though it had been on the market for two months because we knew the value was there. So again, these aren't our one size fits all. We always are looking very creatively and specifically at the strategies for each home. And to chat more about the pricing strategies for your home, feel free to call, email, or visit us online at happyhometeam.com. Happyhometeam.com.